Does a normal arterial pH rule out metabolic acidosis? How about a normal bicarb level? Does it rule out metabolic acidosis? Is ABG necessary to diagnose metabolic acidosis? To answer this, we need to understand metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis is either happens from excess acid in the ECF, the extracellular fluid, or bicarb loss. The excess acid can be from endogenous acid production or exogenous acid consumption. While the bicarb loss can be direct or indirect. Direct means there is direct loss of the bicarb through the kidney or gastrointestinal tract or indirect that there is impaired protons secretions in the kidney which indirectly lead to bicarb loss. Now very important to remember this excess acid in the ECF leads to high anion gap metabolic acidosis while bicarb loss leads to normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. If you remember that you will not need to memorize the differential for high anion gap and normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Now anion gap which all of you probably know already it's the gap between anions and cations in the extracellular fluid. Normally it's 12 to 14. Now it's calculated as you know by sodium level and we subtract from that the sum of chloride and bicarb. Now very important to remember that we used major sodium do not correct for blood glucose. Use the measured one that the one you see in BMP or CMP. Also use measured serum bicarb level the one from BMP or CMP do not use the calculated one from ABG. So use the value on BMP and CMP not the value from ABG. Normal serum bicarb is 22 to 26 and again use the measured bicarb level on BMP or CMP usually labeled as CO2 on BMP or CMP. Do not use the calculated one from ABG. It's less accurate. Accurate. Now let me give you this exercise and I want you to guess if this is increased anion gap or normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Remember increased anion gap excess acids normal anion gap bicarb loss. Lactic acidosis there is acid production this is excess acid that means high anion gap I'm going to call it HAG. DKA there is acid production endogenous acid production ketone acid then this is high anion gap that's easy I don't need to memorize it see diarrhea will lead to bicarb loss then this normal anion gap RTA the same leads to bicarb loss this is normal anion gap diversion of urine into the GI tract this leads to bicarb loss this is normal anion gap saline administration leads to bicarb loss and dilution effects on the bicarb this normal anion gap ethylene glycol this is a consumption of acids this will lead to excess acid in the ECF this will lead to high anion gap the same for methanol now renal failure there is two issues here mild to moderate renal failure will lead to bicarb loss which means normal anion gap when the renal failure becomes severe which means gfr less than probably 30 will lead to acid excess in the acf uremic acids so this will lead to high anion gap so early in the disease of renal failure in mild to moderate renal failure will get bicarb loss and normal anion gap while in advanced renal failure we get uremic acids and we get high anion gap metabolic acidosis so no need to memorize just understand it and you don't have to memorize the differential. To get a summary of this video, please subscribe to my Substack. And if you like what you see so far, please hit the like button. Let's take some examples here. Let's start with example three, pH 7.50. So the pH is alkalotic, right? And it's explained by the low PCO2 here. Despite the normal pH, we always calculate the anion gap. The anion gap is 22, is high. And the bicarb is 15, is low. So there is metabolic acidosis present despite high actually pH. So normal or high pH does not rule out metabolic acidosis. Look at this example too. Anion gap, calculate 145 minus the sum of 124 is 21. Bicarb is 24, which is pretty normal. But metabolic acidosis is present because the anion gap, because there is high anion gap. So even normal bicarb, it does not rule out metabolic acidosis. How about example one? We have an anion gap of five, which is kind of normal or even low. And we have bicarb 
carb level of 25 which is normal there is no acidosis here this is the case where we can for sure say there is no metabolic i'm talking about metabolic acidosis what does that mean that means to rule out metabolic acidosis we need two things normal anion gap and normal bicarb level remember that very well that's what rule out metabolic acidosis on bmp and cmp so elevated anion gap means increase or high anion gap metabolic acidosis present regardless of the bicarb level or arterial ph level now on the other hand low bicarb level with normal anion gap does not necessarily means metabolic acidosis or normal anion gap metabolic acidosis this could be compensatory mechanism to respiratory alkalosis remember the body responds to meet respiratory alkalosis by losing bicarb again normal ph does not rule out metabolic acidosis normal bicarb does not rule out metabolic acidosis calculate the anion gap on every single pm bmp or cmp regardless of bicarb level don't be deceived by normal or high bicarb level please and abg is not necessary to diagnose metabolic acidosis remember all these points now let's talk about possible scenario now i may have a patient that have increased acids in the ecf which lead to elevated anion gap and bicarb loss through the kidney or GI at the same time which leads to normal anion gap metabolic acidosis so both can exist or increase acid in the ECF and excess bicarb absorption so you get elevated anion gap acidosis and metabolic alkalosis both can exist or you can get con conditions that lead to bicarb loss and bicarb absorption at the same time so what do we do here we we look at the net bicarb if the net bicarb is net loss then there is normal anion gap acidosis if the net is net gain then there is metabolic alkalosis that means you cannot say there is normal anion gap and metabolic acidosis and alkalosis at the same time at the same time they don't exist either normal anion gap metabolic acidosis or metabolic alkalosis let's talk about these scenarios now we have examples here so lactic acidosis this will give you high anion gap acidosis i'm going to call it hag metabolic acidosis and diarrhea will lead to bicarb loss that means normal anion gap acidosis now advanced ckd advanced ckd can lead to as i said excess acid so high anion gap excess uremic acids in the acf high anion gap metabolic acidosis and vomiting is a strong stimulus of bicarb absorption so leads to metabolic alkalosis now diarrhea and vomiting diarrhea leads to bicarb loss right and vomiting will lead to bicarb absorption so what do we get depends on the the net as we said if the net is loss we get normal anion gap metabolic acidosis if the net is gain we get metabolic alkalosis high anion gap metabolic acidosis can be associated with normal anion gap acidosis or metabolic alkalosis so to find out we calculate something called delta delta what's delta delta so delta delta we calculate it only if there is elevated anion gap only remember that we calculate the difference between the calculated anion gap and normal anion gap which is 12 we use 12 and then the outcome of this we add it to the patient's major bicarb the value in bmp if the final outcome is less than 22 then there is associated normal anion gap acidosis if the final outcome is between 22 to 26 there is no other associated disorders and if it's above one uh, above 26 there is associated metabolic alkalosis let me give you examples example a let's calculate the anion gap the anion gap i just calculated to you it's 17 so it's high that means there's excess acid in the acf we substitute we 17 minus normal gap which is 12 equal 5 then we add 5 to the 15 here 5 plus 15 is 20 and this 20 is less than 22 that means there is some element of bicarb loss the patient has both high anion gap acidosis and normal anion gap acidosis let's talk about example b here the anion gap is 21 so there is excess acids now the 21 we subtract normal anion gap which is 12 from that that means 9 9 plus 24 that means 33 that means there is bicarb absorption because 33 is above 26 this patient has high anion gap metabolic acidosis and metabolic alkalosis example c we have anion gap 136 minus the sum of 15 and 115 and that's 6 which is normal the normal there is normal anion gap there is no 
no need to calculate delta delta we stop there there is no excess acid and this is from bicarb loss now in all these cases of metabolic acidosis whether high anion gap or normal anion gap we calculate or we can check the adequacy of respiratory compensation if needed i don't check it for everyone i do abg or let's say if they are well compensated or not mainly i reserve it for severe acidosis and sometimes if i want to see if the primary disorder is respiratory alkalosis or respiratory acidosis now abg in metabolic acidosis to assess the severity of acidosis and the adequacy of respiratory compensation as we said and it's not necessary in mild to moderate metabolic acidosis and i mainly obtain it in hemodynamically unstable patients critically ill patients but again if you suspect a primary respiratory acid based disorder rather than metabolic then you can get an abg to confirm that monitoring remember this high anion gap metabolic acidosis is far more serious and dangerous than normal anion gap metabolic acidosis all my sick people in the icu when they have a severe acidosis it's high anion gap metabolic acidosis now they may be associated with normal anion gap but the primary one is high anion gap so life-threatening acidosis is almost always due to high anion gap acidosis normal anion gap acidosis typically cause mild to moderate acidosis remember that monitor potassium very closely especially in severe acidosis so severe acidosis may cause severe hyperkalemia and can be quick you have a BMP uh, 30 minutes ago potassium was 4.5 or 4 in 30 minutes potassium now is 6 so you need to be vigilant now all high anion gap associated with hyperkalemia but some normal anion gap acidosis associated with hypokalemia like diarrhea saline administration RTA type 1 and 2 now critically ill patients with severe acidosis these patients you will commonly encounter them in ICU make sure to closely monitor their potassium with BMPs and closely monitor urine output because if the urine output is low or minimal or none it's a matter of time until potassium and acidosis worsening and they go hand in hand closely monitor cardiac rhythm keep your eye on the cardiac rhythm look for any hyperkalemia induced EKG look if the QRS started to widen or the patient went from tachycardia to bradycardia or heart blocks all these things I explained in my video hyperkalemia induced EKG changes I'll put a link to that video in the description field initiate hyperkalemia treatment as soon as it's suspected do not wait if you suspect it initiate treatment do not wait for potassium level to confirm your diagnosis or suspicion of hyperkalemia I explain in depth the treatment of hyperkalemia in a previous video I'll put a link to that as well as soon as you suspect push calcium and bicarb and keep dialysis in your mind treatment for high anion gap acidosis and both we stop acid production here we stop bicarb loss in normal anion gap metabolic acidosis unless you treat the underlying problem the treatment is going to be difficult now the bicarb therapy in high anion gap acidosis mainly to buffer excess acid while here in normal anion gap is to replace the lost bicarb again high anion gap acidosis more dangerous and life-threatening and here it's milder acidosis in normal anion gap acidosis let's talk about bicarb and pull and drip and explain this in details in my IV fluid course bicarb and pull or push is a pre-filled syringe with 50 ml of sodium bicarb that has 50 ml equivalent of sodium and 50 ml equivalent of bicarb and that means 100 ml equivalent per ampoule the ampoule is very hypertonic the drip can be done by diluting these hypertonic ampoules you mix three ampoules in 1000 cc of d5w or free water three ampoules will three will have osmolality of 300 milli equivalent per liter so very close to be isotonic because each one has 100 three of those will have 300 or if you want to mix it with half an s then you mix 1.5 amp in 1000 cc of half an s then 150 milli equivalent from half an s and 150 from the one and a half ampoule this is 300 ml per liter but in metabolic acidosis severe one especially just mix it with free water or d5w we need high amount of bicarb now i'm saying this because in high anion gap metabolic acidosis when the ph is equal or less than 7.1 we push two amps of bicarb with the goal is to achieve ph equal or above 7.2 or bicarb and or bicarb above 16 equal or above 16 and if not achieved we may push two more amps bicarb drip if that's still not achieved we can use it and the main mistake people do when they use bicarb drip especially in severe life-threatening acidosis they use it at 75 cc an hour or 100 cc an hour 120 
125 cc or 150 you need to use it 250 to 500 and sometimes 1000 cc an hour and hemodialysis keep it in your mind actually i consult nephrology the moment i see there is no urine output or very minimal because i know it's coming and remember hemodialysis is way more effective than crrt in removing potassium and stop acid production and monitor abg and bmp frequently now one thing you may notice on these patients that with worsening acidosis these patients may get more hypotensive requiring more vasopressors and when you push bicarb you see quick improvement in their blood pressure but this all these effects in high anion gaps are temporary unless you stop acid production now normal anion gap metabolic acidosis i usually use bicarb drip if the bicarb level is equal or less than 15 an oral bicarb can be used for milder chronic forms i've never used bicarb pushes in normal anion gap metabolic acidosis and stop the bicarb loss if possible in the end if you found this video helpful and useful please give us a like thanks for watching and i'll see you next video